Hello again, watch friends. Welcome back. Many watch collectors are interested in, in aviation-related watches. There are many storied examples of these, from Charles Lindbergh's pilot watch, to Flieger's that were used by the German Luftwaffe in World War II. Another interesting category is space-related watches. Most of us know the story of the first watch to be worn on the moon, the Omega Speedmaster in 1969 by Neil Armstrong. But the Speedmaster was, not, was a manual wind watch. The first automatic chronograph in space is a matter of debate. In 1985, German astronaut Reinhard Führer wore a SIN 140 during the Space Lab D1 mission. However, the ZIN was not the first automatic chrono in space. This honor belongs to the Seiko 6139-6002. Otherwise known as the Pogue. According to Colonel Pogue, a NASA astronaut on the 1973 Skylab 4 mission, he purchased the 6139 personally at the PX at Ellington Air Force Base and used it extensively during his training. Although the watch wasn't flight approved by NASA, Colonel Pogue brought the watch with him as part of his personal kit on that flight. During the 84-day flight, which was the third and last mission on the United States' first space station, Pogue used the Seiko to time engine burns, and according to him, it operated flawlessly. He was issued a NASA-approved Speedmaster, which he used for several spacewalks. The 6139 was Seiko's first automatic chronograph. It has a 30-minute counter at 6 o'clock, no seconds or other subdial. At three o'clock is a day-date complication with separate framing. An internally rotating bezel or scale operated by the crown provides a tachymeter function. Many variants of this model were made, but this particular model is from 1973 based on the serial number. If you look closely at the watch, you can see that it's got a diameter of 41 millimeters. It's 13.9 millimeters thick. The lug width is 17.6 millimeters. And the lug to lug distance is 46.8 millimeters. The chronograph is operated by the two pushers on the right hand side, one at two o'clock and one at four o'clock. The two o'clock starts and stops the movement of the timer. At four o'clock, when I press that pusher, it resets the chrono back to zero. This watch has Seiko's unique and interesting day and date setting function. If I push in on the crown, you can if I push it in just one notch, you can see that the date changes. I can advance it one date at a time. And if I push it in all the way, the day changes. So a very interesting way of being able to change the date and time. As I mentioned, if I rotate, if I rotate the uh, crown, you can see that the inner bezel moves. I can move forward or backward. Another interesting approach to the tachymeter function rather than having a movable vessel. The bracelet is a nice enough bracelet. Some people complain about Seiko bracelets. Sometimes they catch the hairs on your wrist. It's a simple fold over clasp. Notice that it's signed Seiko on the clasp. 
fold it over and it snaps into position to open it you pull on this piece here opens it right up so an interesting watch with an interesting story and the other good news is that Pogue, a Pogue watch like this can be picked up in good to excellent condition for anywhere from $400 to $800 on various websites and forums. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive either, especially for a watch with a huge history and that can be worn and used today just as it was done 50 odd years ago. So there you have it. The Seiko 6139 6002 Pogue Chronograph. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.